The 2023 NFL season is now just hours away. Over the last few months, I've covered a ton of rookies, talked about their stories and their potential impact on their new NFL teams. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about a guy who was playing tonight, and that is Sam Laporta. He was never supposed to be here. Coming out of high school, he did not have a single Power 5 offer, but right before signing day, he got an offer from Iowa. He decided to take the Hawkeyes up on the chance, and over the next few years, became the next great Iowa tight end, following in the footsteps of Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson, and George Kittle. In today's video though, I'm gonna talk about how all of this happened. We're gonna talk about why he only had one offer, how he made it big at Iowa, and why he's getting so much hype for the Lions. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Sam Laporta. So going back in time to 2015, TJ Hawkinson was a small town Iowa kid who put up big time numbers in high school, but was overlooked by major college recruiters. When he eventually arrived at Iowa, he became a star for them and was drafted into the top 10 in the NFL. Just a few years later, Sam Laporta was gonna follow the exact same path as Hawkinson. He was a wide receiver at Highland High School in Southern Illinois, but few people outside of his town of 10,000 people seemed to even notice him. College recruiters drove right by, and no one thought this guy would ever sniff the NFL. Growing up in this small town, Sam Laporta was always a special athlete, and early on in high school, he actually showed a ton of flash. Jim Warnecke was the head coach at Highland High School for 10 years, and he had only sent one player to a high major program before Laporta. That was Tanner Farmer, who was an offensive lineman at Nebraska, and he said he saw something in Sam Laporta early on. He made him a team captain as a sophomore, but wondered where the heck all the scouts were. He said, quote, we never had anyone like him. When he was on our team, we felt in a sense we were invincible. We knew he was better than any other teams do that we would come across. Laporta began to put up big numbers, and the team started to win a ton thanks to him being the anchor of the team. His coach said, quote, whether it was a Monday in June or a Thursday in July or a Friday in October, he set the bar extremely high for himself and expected everyone around him to follow. When it came time to his recruitment, there were some FCS schools that were going after him pretty hard and even some low major FBS schools. Yale was the school he was very interested in, but Iowa's coaching staff convinced him to cut his Yale visit short and come visit the Hawkeyes for one of their summer camps. I don't know how he did it at the camp, but apparently after that, he heard nothing from the Iowa staff after. This was tough. As a high school senior, he believed he was going to be playing college football at Bowling Green. He'd built a strong relationship with their staff, gone on an official visit, and was ready to commit. But then things changed. He did not end up at Bowling Green at all. In his last year, Laporta put up huge numbers, catching 68 passes for 1,457 yards and 19 touchdowns. He was a first-team All-State selection, and this caught the attention from that former Power 5 program. Iowa's coaching staff offered Sam on December 13th of 2018, just five days before the early signing period. They were trying to get him to come to Iowa City for an official visit, but he remembered the past. When head coach Kirk Ferentz visited him, they invited him to their camp, but passed on offering him because their roster was already stacked with tight ends in Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson. But as time would go on, Iowa's tight end room would become a little bit thinner. Fant declared for the 2019 NFL Draft, and Hawkinson did the same on January 14th. Ferentz said, quote, he came here to camp and it didn't quite go the way we had hoped. So he kept moving on and said, hey, we'll keep watching you. And he kept performing every single week. His mother said the Iowa coaches gave him and his family less than 24 hours to decide if they're gonna come on an official visit and they were unsure what to do. Kirk Ferentz called his mom trying to convince him to come to Iowa City, but Sam really didn't have much of an interest in visiting Iowa because he hadn't formed a great relationship and the last second offer didn't sit right with him. His mom said, quote, I think he was a little bit hurt by that. He started talking to more and more players and they all got to go to the Iowa football games and stand on the sidelines and look at it from a different level. We never got that opportunity. So he was like, I feel I can play at that level, but maybe not because nobody's taking notice. His coach did eventually convince him to go on the visit. And once Sam got to Iowa City, the Hawkeyes pulled out all the stops. Their director of recruiting, Brian Ferentz, the special teams coach, and TJ Hawkinson all went out to a steak dinner at the Iowa Chop House. They then went back to Hawkinson's place to hang out with former kicker, Keith Duncan. He eventually decided to commit to the Hawkeyes over Bowling Green, Yale, and Eastern Michigan. Iowa was his one and only Power 5 offer, and now he had a legacy to live up to. He said, quote, it's really cool to represent a great fraternity of tight ends coming from Iowa and being the next one in line. Sam had a record-breaking career at Highland High School as he caught 50 touchdowns and racked up nearly 4,000 receiving yards. At the time, his touchdowns and receiving yards ranked second and third in the state of Illinois' high school football history. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a three-star recruit, the number 55 tight end, and the 1,170th best player in the class of 2019. So how would he end up doing at Iowa? 
When Sam arrived at Iowa, he was fresh off seeing TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant go in the first round of the draft, and he was hoping to be next up. When you arrive as an Iowa tight end, it might take a year or two to learn the system, but apparently he was good enough from the very beginning and by all accounts had an easy transition, but things weren't always easy for him. He said, quote, I thought to myself, I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to play at this level. I have quite a few stories of me ending up on the ground. So as a freshman in 2019, Laporta would end up appearing in six games. He'd have a 41-yard catch on the road against Northwestern, and then would have three catches against Nebraska, and had his breakout performance against USC, as in a win over number 22 USC, he had six catches for 44 yards. On the year, he finished with 15 catches for 188 yards. Going into 2020, Laporta would now take over as the main tight end, and had a couple of big games. He had a hot start as, as against Purdue and Northwestern, he combined for 11 catches and over 100 yards receiving, and then a couple weeks later against Illinois, would catch his first career touchdown. By the end of the 2020 season, he had finished with 27 catches for 271 yards and a score. The flash and potential was there, but the stat column did not match up with it. Luckily, 2021, he would once again improve. He had six combined catches in their wins over number nine Iowa State and number 17 Indiana, had seven catches for 65 yards and a touchdown against Kent State. Throughout the rest of the year, he was solid and would help Iowa get to the Big Ten Championship game where he caught six passes against Michigan. They'd end up getting to the Citrus Bowl where against number 22, Kentucky, he caught seven passes for 122 yards and a touchdown. That was the best performance of his career so far and he was named a third team all Big Ten selection after catching 53 passes for 670 yards and three scores. He could have gone off to the NFL, but he decided he wanted to come back and be a legend. How did he do last season? Well, he was pretty decent. He had eight catches in week two in their loss to Iowa State, had five catches against Michigan, and then had a career high nine catches for 100 yards against Illinois. He also got six passes against number two Ohio State, a touchdown against Purdue, and went for nearly 100 yards against Minnesota. His final collegiate game would come against Kentucky, where in a 21-0 victory, he'd catch five passes. On the year, he caught 58 passes for 657 yards and a touchdown. In four years with the Iowa program, Laporta was first all-time amongst the Hawkeye tight ends with 153 career catches, and second all-time with 1,786 receiving yards. He definitely was the next great Iowa tight end, but one thing I did notice is he didn't have that many touchdowns. You can partially blame that on the Iowa offense, but I never realized that he didn't have that many scores. That was going to be the one knock on his game going into the NFL draft, and Laporta was considered a top three to top four tight end in this year's draft class. Eventually, he was drafted with the 34th overall pick in the second round by the Detroit Lions and would join another St. Louis area kid in Jamison Williams. With Laporta, Jack Campbell, and Lucas Van Ness all going in the top 40 picks, Iowa had had three players in the first 40 picks since 1986. It was truly a historic year for them. Right away, Laporta has been seen as the next great tight end and a missing piece for a Lions team that is trying to make the playoffs. This is not the first time that Iowa's drafted a tight end high, as they went for Brandon Pettigrew, Eric Ebron, and TJ Hawkinson, and they were all supposed to be that weapon, but many are saying Laporta is different. One Lions coach said, quote, he's earned it right now to be in that first team huddle with Jared Goff in that offensive line. He's proven that in the course of the springtime with all the work he has put in. Laporta's getting a ton of hype. People are talking about him in fantasy and he should be the starting tight end tonight for the Lions, but everyone should hold the brakes a little bit. Since the year 2000, only four rookie tight ends have, have surpassed 600 yards in year one. Those included Kyle Pitts, Jeremy Shockey, Evan Engram, and John Carlson. But George Kittle, arguably the best tight end in football, believes the future is extremely bright for Laporta. Kittle said, quote, Laporta is going to be fantastic. I think he's the best tight end in this year's draft class, and I think the Lions got a complete steal. I like the other tight ends too, but I spent two weeks training with Sam, and the way he moves, he's got that dog in him. He's kind of quirky, he's kind of goofy, but he's going to fit in well. Yeah, you could say Kittle may be a little bit biased because of where he went to school, but gaining that sort of respect from a player like that definitely has to say something and mean something. I think Laporte is going to be a great weapon for Jared Goff this year, will hopefully help the Lions make the playoffs, and will be a consistent playmaker for the next 10 years or so. We'll have to wait and see, but what do you guys think? If you're an Iowa or a Lions fan, what do you think of Sam Laporta? What other NFL player or rookie should I cover next? And what other topic on the channel do you want me to cover? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.